Actually, people have thrown crazy claims toward Daniel. Some of the reviews actually did not like his depiction of the police, the police force. And there's going to be quite a lot of drama in this particular video. Some of the comments I've seen, uh, they have gone as far as to claim that he supports uh, the brutality of the bullies in this particular novella. We will talk about that and for this particular review actually I wanted to do something different. Uh, basically I will be examining what Daniel was trying to achieve with the novella and then from there try to glean and examine how well he does what he tries to achieve. So many people review novels and books in a straightforward way. It's all about what they want, what they want, what they want and no one really seeks to stop and, and examine what the author was trying to achieve and that is what I'm trying to do with this particular video. Basically, I want to know what Daniel was trying to achieve with this novella. And I'm going to jump from there and examine and give it a final review. Okay. Actually, I'm starting daily uploads and I want to really expand this particular channel. What I do here are book reviews and I analyze books. If you want me to analyze your favorite book, you can drop it down into the comments below. Uh, but basically what I want to do is start daily uploads and I it really baffled me the last two days, three days. I have gained more subscribers than I did in a year and a half, which is absolutely, absolutely bonkers. Uh, I thank you all for that. And I'm going to start daily uploads. So if you want to stay tuned for that, you know, support small time YouTubers, uh, please, you can consider subscribing. You're breathtaking. In my particular eye, you can include everything in the story and it does not mean that you believe what you include in your story. An author must do what is required to tell the story. This particular opinion is where I actually want to approach this whole particular uh, debate about whether, you know, uh, Daniel's depiction of the police force was good or bad. So many authors nowadays sugarcoat and avoid controversial topics in their novels. And this is really to me very sad because I am one of those people who believes that the author must do whatever is required to tell the story. If the police in Daniel's story were not so brutal, they would have not been the correct depiction from Daniel. Why? Because the police here, a lot of the people that are criticizing Daniel are thinking of American police. They are thinking of a republic police, the police of a republic. This is not the police of a republic. This is the police force of an authoritarian government. There is literally something called the Ministry of Truth. This is Orwellian. I don't know if, if, if Ministry of Truth does not, does not scream uh, Orwellian, I don't know what is. Like, does Daniel have to scream in every page for people to actually pick it up that this is not America? Because this is not America. To assume and to hate Daniel because his depiction of the police force, you know, is, is very different from what you would see from American police is to me absolutely crazy because you see what he does, first of all, is brave. Why? Because again, exactly for this particular reason, he is getting backlash for that sort of depiction. But number two, it is correct for the story. The story requires of him to give up his personal American beliefs and to actually examine what an authoritarian police force would look like. Go to North Korea. Uh, go to these countries that have authoritarian governments. And I have actually experienced because I have lived in a dictatorship for a good chunk of my life. I know that you cannot even talk about politics to your closest friend. These police force, if they are depicted like American police force, they would not be accurate. They have to be 10 times more brutal because you, you want to know why? Because they have 10 times more power. They have 10 times more power. They are literally the agents of God. And if you resist the agents of God, you will be shot on spot. They are not the police of a republic. They are the police of an Orwellian society that is absolutely authoritarian. And if you step out of line for one particular second, you will have one of these anointed monsters come at you and literally punch your face in. In this particular world, it's not a spoiler, by the way. Uh, in this particular world, there is this particular unit called uh, the Fist, and they are described as some of the elite of the elite. And they can shoot you unprovoked. And it would be legal, it would be legal for the police in this particular world to shoot you unprovoked. And if you die, it would be legal. No one will do anything. Do you want to know why? Because they are agents of God. God is on their side. In other words, the ruler, the dictator is on their side. And the fact that he depicts these policemen so well, the police of an authoritarian government, tells me that he has done a lot of research. And number two, it tells me that he is brave enough to actually go against the norms of his country and depict something that is not normal in his country. Uh, this is to me the greatest, uh, you know, one of the greatest traits 
a writer, an author can have. Why? Because that author is willing to do what is required to tell the story. So, is Daniel's depiction of this particular police force correct? Yes. Does he believe what they are doing? Does he support what they're doing? Absolutely no. In no point in this particular novella does Daniel portray the way that these police force are handling, you know, and, and treating the, the, the civilians as positive. Every time it's a tragedy. The fact that I'm putting you in the shoes of people who are way overpowered, deified police officers. And that's the setting of breach of peace. You're following cops who have so much more authority than the cops in the real world have and abuse it. A few comments I've seen from spinning off his review have talked about how, well, it's clear Daniel believes this. It's clear Daniel wants this to be a thing. <laughs> no. This book is not grim dark. Uh, actually, I was wrong in my first video. This book is not grim dark. If this is grim dark, believe me, uh, it doesn't even cut it. What is happening in this particular novel, uh, novella, is that the moments that are supposed to be dark, they are very dark. The moments that are supposed to be lighthearted and, 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 and you know, calm and, and soothing, they are specifically soothing and calm and lighthearted. In the past, he has expressed that he does not like grim dark. And it is true, okay? Uh, this novella is not grim dark. It is indeed what is required for the scene to work out. If, the, if it's supposed to be dark, it will be dark. If it's supposed to be lighthearted, it will be lighthearted. Another thing is that Daniel is not cheap. Uh, his plot, his story, his characters, they are, for instance, for instance, one of the greatest things that I hate in a lot of fantasy is that the protagonist is very special. Uh, the protagonist in this particular story is not uh, Mary Sue. Uh, in fact, she has to work for every step of what she gets. She has to crawl every inch of the way. She's like Logan Nine Fingers. Nothing is handed to her. And then there's the worst aspect of this novella, right, which is the bros. The prose in this novella is actually not uh, good. It is actually quite terrible. The, the prose in most of the times is very dry. It's like taking two rocks and just great, you know, smashing them together. In fact, the way it feels to me right now is that the plot was written by a seasoned 40-year-old and the prose was written by a young amateur 20-year-old something writer. Uh, yeah, in fact, the prose is right up his age. Uh, you would expect to get such a prose you would get such a prose uh, from someone his age uh, and someone of his experience. Uh, but the plot actually surprised me. I tried to scrutinize it and I could not find, uh, you know, major plot holes. I was very happy with how the characters all, you know, came together to tell such a nice mystery. The greatest move Daniel made for this particular novella is the fact that it is mystery. This is really a very clever move because his world building is not that special. Uh, it is clean. Uh, that is what I will give it to him. It's not a special. It is clean. Uh, and in fact, Joe Abercrombie does a way better job. But speaking of that, it is a clean world building. And if he presented it on a plate to the reader, specifically, like, let's say if he presented it to me, I would have not been very interested. Uh, but he chose to make it mystery, which is one of the greatest moves, if not the greatest move uh, Daniel did. Also, the new thing that I want to do for my book reviews is actually take into account uh, what the author was trying to achieve. Take a look at this. What I, uh, when I set out for this, the first thing in my head was, you know, I'd really love for the fantasy genre to take almost a, like a back seat for the story. He achieves this particular task that he has set out for himself, which is to have minimal fantasy uh, very, very well, remarkably well. In fact, so well, I noticed it in the first few sentences. And then, you know, so, so I have this minimal fantasy idea, and then I wanted to bring in another genre to kind of add some flavor to the pot. But what I want to be doing is add in a lot of horror elements from the classic horror movies that really uh, I'm in love with. And I say movies, not books, because I've read a few horror books. I've liked a few of them, but the ones that really inspire me and make a deep impact on how I view the horror genre have been movies like Alien, The Shining, um, really the old, the, when suspense came to the forefront, that's when I enjoyed horror the most. And then the modern horror from Stephen King as well with the psychological aspects 
Daniel achieves this remarkably well because again, uh, it, there is a mystery to it. And, but then at the same time, it's like Stephen King's psychological horror. And also it is paranormal and the aesthetic and everything else. He captures it remarkably well. Even the basin of these, uh, of this novella feels, uh, very fast, like the, like the alien movie, right? So I will give him one star for achieving what he set out to achieve so remarkably well. And then I will give him one star for two things, right? For the world building, which is half a star, but also uh, another half a star for the mystery, because he combines these two things and it's such a beautiful cocktail. And then I will give him another star for the plot. The plot feels like it was written by a seasoned 40 year old. But then I will give him a final star for two things, uh, half a point because the prose, uh, which is the language, is actually one star the prose includes the dialogue the dialogue in the novel novella is so good uh, but the prose is so bad they are like the complete opposite uh, and so i will i will give him half a star for the uh for the uh dialogue but he has to improve prose the prose i'll give him zero out of whatever moving on i'll give him another half a star for actually the characters the total star for characters is one uh, but he gets half in my eyes because the characters in this particular novella even though they had promise uh, they didn't go anywhere and the plot the plot took over the characters the plot took over the characters so at some point they felt like empty agents that are chasing the plot who didn't have any uh, goals of the own uh, actually there's a new video that will come out in two days time uh, which will be about the way of kings which will analyze how Kaladin and in the Stormlight archive you know those characters have agency and they do their own thing outside of the main plot in this particular novella Daniel fails to do that miserably. The, his characters become agents for the plot uh, and they are basically empty shells for the plot to happen. Total, uh, four out of five stars. I have enjoyed this novella so much. Uh, at some point, you cannot put it down. You want to see more. Uh, I will be starting daily uploads after this video is up. Tomorrow, there will be a video about The Way of Kings. And the day after that, actually, it will be another video about The Way of Kings, analyzing that particular book uh, and some things uh, about Brandon Sanderson. If you want to support me, uh, you know, <laughs> actually, in the, in the last two days, I've gained more subs than I did in a, in, in a whole, like, in so long, it's baffling me. Uh, so I want to thank you specifically uh, for subscribing and hey, support a small time YouTuber. Uh, thank you. I'm trying to grind. Uh, so <laughs> join me if you want to. Uh, I hope that you enjoyed this particular video. Have a nice day.